What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Today, another basketball video. I'm sorry, basketball's been on the brain lately. A lot of stuff's been going on in basketball. The season's just ended, playoffs are on the corner, and uh, it's time to get into it because we have some breaking news. Well, not breaking since uh, this video came out a lot after. But, Magic Johnson steps down as Lakers head of basketball operations. Think of that guys. Magic Johnson, one of the best Lakers of all time, was the head of basketball operations to le help lead this team to an NBA final or an NBA championship. And maybe l three years in, he finally steps down. And I'll get into that in a bit. But it's a little weird that he's such a public figure when it comes to basketball and everybody knows who he is. Everybody wants to work with him. He has his star power around him that you think that he would have handled this a little bit better. But, but being Magic Johnson, I understand. I mean, if you wanted to steal a little bit of the spotlight there but or or if you just wanted to get it over with i understand but it, it's a little weird uh and we'll get in, and we'll get into that so starting from the beginning magic johnson started in february of 2017 as head of basketball operations now in the three season span that he was the head of basketball operations the lakers unfortunately did not make a playoff and is it his fault probably not but at the same time, it could be his fault. Him and Rob Polinka were brought in by Jeannie Buss after the whole controversy of Jeannie Buss and her brother having discussions and arguments of who was going to help run the team after their father passed away a couple years ago. Uh, but now that that was all settled and Jeannie Buss was in order, she agreed to appoint Magic Johnson and Rob Polinka as head of basketball operations and GM, respectively. Knowing they had to eventually move on from Kobe Bryant's shadow, uh, it was going to be a little difficult to see how how they would move forward and in what direction they would move forward. Would they stick with the new age of basketball as, as a team full of shooters or would they stick to the old conventional ways of mid-range, big men, and speed? So anyway, yeah, he started in February 2017. He had a record of 79 and 108 as the executive. I mean, he's not the one coaching the team, but he is the one kind of picking and choosing the players. The overall record of the Lakers was 79 and 108 with Magic Johnson at the helm. Since he became the president of basketball operations, they were able to draft some good players, but at the same time, a lot of them weren't able to develop fully. And I mean, a few of them were only maybe two or three years in. So of course, it's going to be difficult to uh, fully see what they are made of now. But I did think he missed a couple of times. Um, he did draft the likes of Lonzo Ball, Brandon Ingram, and Kyle Kuzma. Kyle Kuzma is an absolute baller. This guy is going to be great to watch for the next couple of years. On top of that, Brandon Ingram is dealing with some health issues at the moment. So it's kind of difficult to see how he will be progressing later on in the future. Uh, but he also did draft Lonzo Ball, who, to be honest, is not that great. Um, unfortunately to say, he might be a bust. Uh, when it comes coming out of the Lakers, especially when you look at the likes of Kyle Kuzma and Brandon Ingram, especially having the uh, likes of LeBron James around them now. I mean, you can't really rely on him to facilitate. You can't really rely on him to make the three. So with the number two pick, you want to get a player who could at least do some of those things. And for somebody who struggles to do one of them, it's not a good look for that being your first draft pick. And I understand the whole hype coming out of him out of college. He, he went to UCLA. He was from Chino Hills, so he's in the local area. So you're going to have local support. But at the same time, the Lakers are an organization that is known for winning. They don't care about short story sympathy or something to make them feel good. They want to win. The Lakers are a team that wants to win. And I understand that they are a team that hasn't been winning in, um, in recent memories. They haven't made the playoffs in about four or five years now. So yeah, it's going to be pretty difficult to see them winning anytime soon. Uh, maybe next year they'll do a little bit better, but to win anything major is going to be really, really difficult for them going forward. On top of the players that he did have in his draft class, there was one major aspect that made Magic Johnson really stand out in LA, and that was the signing of LeBron James. I don't know how much Magic Johnson played an actual role in signing LeBron James, uh, just because LeBron James kind of already had his mind made up that he wanted to go to LA because he wanted to be in the area, he wanted to expand his brand, he wanted to make sure his kids were in a good place, and his family does live in LA uh, for the most part uh, when he's not in season. So yeah, he wants to be closer to his family, his kids are getting a little bit older, his son is going into middle school, maybe high school now, but I can understand why he would want to move back to LA um, and expand his brand. I mean, this guy is a billion dollar player, he's a billion dollar person. He's signing a lifetime deal with Nike, appearing in movies, having his own TV show on HBO. This guy is a major, major brand. LeBron James knew he wasn't coming to the Lakers for a rebuild project. He wanted to win. He wanted to continue making the playoffs. He wanted something back. He wanted another big name player to join with him. And that's where the whole Anthony Davis situation came into play. Now with the whole Anthony Davis situation, it's a little, it, it's a little complicated. 
the Lakers were looking to pick up another asset uh, that they could potentially sign to a Supermax contract because they did have the money. Because LeBron James did take a pay cut. Um, I don't think you could call it that. It was like $130 million for three years. So uh, uh, LeBron James did take a bit of a pay cut, if that's what you want to call it. But he knew doing that that he would leave Lakers money on the table to sign a big name player. And Anthony Davis expressed how he really wanted to be a Laker in the future and then went to the Pelicans and asked them for a trade. When they came to the whole trade situation, there was about a week or two where, where rumors were circulating and people were speculating on what were the deals and what were the terms of the deals. But the deal never got made. And all in all, it was a plot for the Pelicans GM at the time to kind of cause some controversy in the Lakers camp, which I honestly think it did. The rumors came out that the Lakers were willing to offer Lonzo Ball, Kyle Kuzma, Brandon Ingram, and a couple other picks just to get Anthony Davis. So imagine, you're gonna give up three of your talents that you drafted and maybe another draft pick to pick up Anthony Davis, who was willing to sign a Supermax contract with you, but you are giving up your future pretty much. You are giving up future players. And if you were to make that deal, you are committing to winning now, which is great, but you still don't have anybody on that team around you to quite want to commit to. You could commit to Kyle Kuzma and Brandon Ingram. You're not going to give them super max contracts, uh, but Lonzo Ball you're not going to commit to after the next couple of years. But when that finally fell through, the Lakers were kind of stuck with, okay, now we have money in our hand and no player that wants to come here. What do we do? And that's when LeBron goes down. LeBron goes down with injury, and unfortunately, yes, it did lead to them missing the playoffs. Um, and you can cite that as a big reason that Magic Johnson probably stepped down. I mean, he states other reasons, we'll, which we will get to. But, yeah, for LeBron James to miss a lot of time and for them to lose a lot of games during that span, you could honestly tell that it was the beginning of the end there. When it came to Magic Johnson stepping down, he cited a few things. He said that being the president of basketball operations for an NBA team isn't the same than just being an NBA ambassador, which he is. He's probably one of the most well-known athletes, not just in basketball, but probably in the world. His story has inspired millions and millions of people. And if you haven't heard his story, I suggest you guys look it up. It's an amazing story. Uh, so for him to be an amazing athlete, an amazing person, who is very charitable, who is very public, who uh, is not afraid to get in front of the cameras and give some advice or just reach out to other players, I can understand that you don't want to be in the, in the president role where you're not allowed to interact with players. I, I understand you also don't want to be the person who can't reach out to other players or do what you normally do when it comes to your charitable work or other types of organizations like that because you're committed to this other job. And in doing that, any interaction with another player is considered tampering. What tampering is, is that you are try to convince another player who is currently signed to another team to come to your team once his contract is up or to demand a trade. Unfortunately, because of his role, he could not interact with any other players and he decided that he would really love to work with other NBA players without the whole umbrella of the Lakers holding over his head because he doesn't want to get fined. I mean, no team wants to get fined for talking to another player. And I understand you are probably one of the bigger known players in the world and people want to work with you and you want to work with those other players without any restrictions. So yes, for him to want to leave because he wants to be the person he used to be and the person and he's always known to be that makes perfect sense be you don't let anybody or any job restrict you from being who you were but the sheer fact that you decided to quit on national television and before the final game of the season and not even tell your boss beforehand is a pretty messed up thing to do to be honest she doesn't know i'm standing here because i know i would be crying like a, a baby in front of her even though i'm about to cry now um but it's the right thing to do right move to make you are basically giving them no notice you're giving them no head start the media knows before the boss and that's never a good way to put it i mean yeah nobody's gonna get mad at him because he is magic johnson and the reasons he did give were really really great but it, it's just a fear it's just a pure respect thing it's just something you do for your superiors and i understand he's magic johnson nobody can really tell him what to do but it, it's just a whole respect thing um, and also you're kind of distracting your players from the game that they have to play that they haven't yet played then so To give that statement on national television before the players are even taking the floor. It, it's a little crazy um, I mean, it's something that Takes a lot of guts and he apparently had them so uh, good for him Moving forward for the Lakers though It's gonna be very difficult to rebuild for them LeBron James is another year older and can opt out of his contract after this year they are going to be looking to sign some big players in the offseason. Uh, the likes of Kyrie Irving are out there, Kevin Durant, 
uh, Jimmy Butler, uh, Tobias Harris. A lot of players are out there looking for super max deals. Uh, and the Lakers have the money to do so. They have the money to give the Kevin Durants, the Kyrie Irvings, the Tobias Harris, the Jimmy Butlers, and many other players those Supermax contracts that they're looking for. Uh, Anthony Davis is the biggest consideration, but his, his deal isn't done for another year. So the only way to get Anthony Davis to sign with you is you have to trade him and then sign him to that long-term deal afterwards. But it's going to be very difficult to do now because you are now missing the head of basketball operations to give you any leverage on negotiations. And imagine being that player in the office and during negotiations and you're looking at Magic Johnson, how would you not want to work with this guy? Which I understand that's the reason Magic Johnson decided to leave because he decided to work with other players without any restrictions. But he wasn't just a talking piece for you. He was a big marketing piece for you. Imagine imagine you say you could come play with Kyle Kuzma, LeBron James. You get to work for Magic Johnson. So you're not just getting another year of LeBron James who could opt out. You're not just looking for another superstar that you could bring into your rotation. But you are now having to look for a new coaching staff. Luke Walton ended up getting fired at the end of the season. Or as I want to say, mutually part ways. But that, that's... A little bull you know he didn't win that many games with the Lakers and it's unfortunate because he was a really good coach for the Warriors granted he had probably one of the best teams of all time that he coached with to be a coach and knowing that you are relying on one player very heavily which is LeBron James and you have to rely on a whole bunch of young role players to get things going and a team that isn't structurally built properly I mean yeah you have Rajon Rondo you have JaVale McGee who are longtime veterans but they don't bring anything great to the table anymore. Rajon Rondo yeah, used to be a great player, and so was JaVale McGee at one time. To build around with LeBron James and all those young guys, it's not going to work that way. So they're kind of starting from scratch now, and I know LeBron isn't going to be the person that's going to be very patient with stuff like this. Uh, the future coach of the Lakers is still to be decided. I know you could potentially think that a Ty Lue or somebody who has general knowledge of working with LeBron would be the best fit just because Le LeBron likes to handpick his coaches because he likes to pick people who he knows he could manipulate or go over. Like the Ty Lue situation, the David Blatt situation, a whole lot of coaches that he had in Cleveland that he could just go straight over their heads and straight to the GMs or do things himself. And I mean, that's the kind of player LeBron is. He's the greatest player in our game at the moment or kind of was, but he is the guy who if he wants a decision made, he will go and make it himself. So with Magic Johnson leaving, it's going to be a little difficult to see where the Lakers go from here. I mean, they're a very talented team. The name Lakers still means a lot in the NBA. So I won't be surprised if they do get somebody pretty fast or they can still sign players with star power and can still make better runs next year. I'm not going to be surprised if they do all that because they are the Lakers. The Lakers win. The Lakers decide to make big decisions to get big players and to make big moves. So... If they end up doing all that, great. If not, if not, well, we'll see where LeBron goes at the end of the, at the end of next year. I really want to thank you guys again for watching this video. Thank you guys for watching the last videos. And if you guys haven't checked out my last videos, I will leave up a little image here or here. Uh, and you guys can go check out my next video after you guys are done here. Uh, but don't forget to like, don't forget to comment, don't forget to subscribe. If you're new around here, don't forget to join the Concerned Sports Fan family. We are a channel that's looking to grow. We are looking to make big things. We are looking to make great videos. So go ahead and join us. Uh, hit the subscribe button, turn on post notifications, leave a like, and I will see you guys in the next video.